welcome to my RC channel. Today we have the AR Fun from Aurora RC. It's a 90mm brushless micro quad. How crazy is this? A brushless micro that's 90 millimeters? I just can't get over how small it is. It's actually my first micro that's under 100 millimeters, and I just have a feeling it's gonna be ridiculously fast. What's really amazing is the amount of performance that these miniaturized boards are capable of. For example, Take the flight controller and ESCs, even though they're smaller, a lot smaller, they actually perform better than almost all of my larger mini quads, most of which aren't even a year old. Anyways, onto the AR fun. What I'm going to do is start from the front of the quad and just make my way around. So first off, we have an all-in-one FPV kit. It includes a 600 TVL HD camera with a CMOS sensor, a 5.8 GHz 25 milliwatt VTX with 48 channels and lastly a 3DVI with antenna. This VTX has two buttons. Um, the one on the front has two functions. Either it will flip the image upside down or if you hold it, it'll turn off the OSD. I think if you hold it for three to four seconds, it'll turn it off. The second button or the button on the back is the one that will change the channels and, and frequency. Same thing if you quick press it'll change the channels and if you hold it for three to four seconds it'll change the band. The FPV kit weighs next to nothing. I mean it comes in at just a little bit above three grams. I think there's a good and bad side to having a whip antenna. On one hand, it's extremely durable and lightweight, but it will always fall short when compared to a circular polarized antenna, especially when it comes to range and penetration of walls or other objects. In this clip, you can get a good idea of how the VTX and antenna performs when there are obstructions in the way, and just basically to see how it looks. In my opinion, the picture quality is decent, objects aren't as defined as I would have liked, but it's still good enough to easily make things out. The 120 degree field of view was definitely a good thing. The wider viewing angle makes flying FPV easier. I've tried cameras with lower field of view and I just couldn't get used to it. Although it's doing pretty good in this clip, I gotta say that the picture quality will vary and um, this could depend on the goggles that you use or even just the antennas that you're using. Yes, the flight controller rebooted. I've been noticing this to happen a lot lately, especially after crashing, but as well as after a brownout, which I'll get into a little bit later. The propellers you see here are DYS XT2030. I'll have a link in my description. Um, I did have a little issue with fitment, for me, it was scraping the top right corner of the camera, but um, I think my issue was that when I crashed, I might have twisted the frame and shifted the camera a bit because I actually talked to Gearbest and they informed me that it does indeed fit. Next up, we have these tiny little brushless motors. They're called DYSBE1104. Each rated at 7500 kilovolts. It's got a 1.5 millimeter shaft and four holes on top that are used to lock the propellers in place. Each motor weighs just five five and a half grams and each producing up to 118 grams of thrust. This quad really has a ton of power, um, especially with a five bladed prop. This thing is a bullet. Going right around, we have the flight controller and ESCs. The flight controller is an Omnibus F3 with an integrated OSD. It pretty much weighs next to nothing, just 3 grams, and the board measures in at 27 by 27 millimeters with 20 by 20 millimeter mounting holes. It comes preloaded with Betaflight 3.1 and supports PPM, SBUS, DSM2, DSMX, basically all the receivers. Um, I mean, at least I. I can't think of any that wouldn't work. Uh, this is a very powerful flight controller and it can easily run at 8K 
yet still have a low CPU load. The OSD that's included can be modified directly through Betaflight, which makes things a, a heck of a lot easier. Betaflight OSD isn't feature rich like MWOSD and MinimOSD, but it does have all the features you would want. MinimOSD is very time consuming to set up, it just has too many options to run through and edit and for that reason I think it's catered more so towards larger drones or FPV planes. Okay so back to the whole brownout situation, it's pretty simple. The battery that was included is just too weak. It's got just 25C discharge, um, I mean the, the hardware on this quad is just too power hungry. You got the motors, ESC, flight controller, OSD, camera, VTX, it's going to take up a lot of juice, especially when you're heavy on the throttle. As you'll see in this clip, um, the brownout usually happens when, whenever I'm really high on the throttle. So here's when I got on the throttle, uh, then all of a sudden I have no control and it begins to flip. Basically, when I hit the throttle, the AR fun was drawing too many amps, causing the voltage to drop down below a critical level, and the board resets. It boots back up, but unfortunately it's not fast enough. Here's another clip of a brownout, this time right after I go for a flip. The good thing about this issue is that it's an easy fix. You just need to buy a battery with a higher discharge rating. I would say find one with the highest possible, but my guess would be anything above 75 would be more than enough. Next up, on the back of the quad is the buzzer, which is actually pretty loud. It's rated at 80 decibels and sports a super bright 10 lumens LED. I think it's really useful especially with the quad being so small, it can be quite difficult to find after a crash. As long as the battery didn't eject and you already have a switch set up, finding the AR fund shouldn't be a big issue. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about is the frame itself. At the moment, Gearbest doesn't sell just the frame, but you can pick it up elsewhere, and that store starts with a B. It's a nice frame, it's got a 1.5mm top plate and a thick 3mm main plate. In total, it weighs just 12 grams. It's very well put together. When I took it out of the box for the first time and held it in my hands, it felt very strong, and it just had a sense of durability. However, I feel the arms are too narrow. I mean, they're like twigs. I would have preferred wider arms, even if it does mean a little extra weight. I think it would be worth it because the frame would be much more durable. The last thing I want to do is show how to set up the receiver. It's pretty easy. The hardest part was plugging the battery in while holding the bind button. Um, if you have someone nearby, I, I just have them help you. So what you're going to do is hit the menu button, scroll down to an open slot, and hold the enter button, create new model. You're going to want to choose this one, quadcopter, hit the page button, keep hitting the page button, until you get to this screen and then hold enter to confirm. Here's where you enter the name. Press up and down to scroll through the letters, and for uppercase letters, hold the enter button. Then scroll down to the mode section, and we're going to want to choose D8. And then this, this is where you bind the receiver. What you do is you just hit bind. Next, you're going to want to set up your switches. All you do is go to slot 5, and then go down to source, 
hit enter and then select your switch hit enter again and you can name it whatever you want I'm going to Hit page until you get to the mixers tab. And then for the rest of these, I named them Aux 1, Aux 2, and Aux 3 for channels 5, 6, and 7. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and thanks for watching.